Oh, hey, parents and kids. We've carefully selected five great events this May that are guaranteed to be the most fun you can possibly have as human families. Number one, this Saturday, May 4th, how about having a parents' night out sponsored by Pedro's Judo Center in Wakefield? I mean, while Pedro entertains the kids, go have a brewski, procreators. Don't worry, they're judo experts. Your kids will have a blast following an attention-grabbing judo storyline and playing themed games. Kids must be at least six years old to participate. Event is from 5 to 8 p.m., $35 per person. Number two, the weekend of May 4th and 5th, take your kid on the 5th Annual Fairy Gnome Discovery Walk at historic Pettingill Farm in Salisbury and enjoy an enchanting ramble through lush gardens and an enchanted forest. The gems of the event are the 200 fairy and gnome homes peppered throughout a one-mile wooded path. Legal notice, homes are created by human professionals, families, and school children, not actual fairies. Fairies aren't real, we think. Admission, $6. Number three, or hey folks, why don't you go fly a kite? Started in 1969, the Kite and Bike Festival brings out more than a thousand people to fly kites, ride bikes, and picnic. With food trucks, affordable kites for sale, bike mechanics on site, and the beautiful scenery of Franklin Park, this event is not to be missed. Starts at 11 a.m. on May 18th at the Franklin Park Plainstead. Number four, celebrate Mother's Day by quacking it up over at Duckling Day. A beloved tradition for more than 30 years, Duckling Day celebrates the classic book Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCluskey with a parade of over a thousand humans strong, many dressed like characters from the story. So ducks, I guess. Led by the Harvard Marching Band, the parade begins at the Parkman Bandstand and ends in the public garden near the famous Make Way for Duckling sculpture. Prior to the parade, there will be a vibrant array of family entertainment, including crafts, face painters, a magician, circus games, and even more. All families are welcome to decorate their wagons or strollers, bring a picnic, or just enjoy springtime. If it rains, never you mind. Just let it go like water off a duck's back. Finally, check out the Brookline Cherry Blossom Festival, celebrating Japanese culture and spring. Come enjoy music, dance, taiko drums, crafts, activities, and Japanese food. Co-sponsored by the Genki Spark and the Brookline High School Japanese program, it's May 18th, starting at noon at the high school's quad. No word on if they'll show Rashomon again this year. Opinions are really split on how that went last year. There you go, folks. Five events this May guaranteed to please humans of all ages. Go have fun, human families. Have fun. Hi there, we're here with Amy Kucharek from the Summer Lely Festival, which is the Somerville Ukulele Festival. It's happening in May. Amy, thanks for making the trip to talk to us. You're welcome. Thank you, Sean. What are people going to see you do when they come to this festival? Ah, so this is going to be taking place at the uh, Center for Arts at the Armory, the Somerville Armory. And um, it's in conjunction with something called Art Week, as mm -hmm. well as um, it's happening during Somerville Open Studios. Studios. So mm -hmm. you're going to walk into the Armory, and it's an explosion of art and an explosion of ukulele players. Wow. Um, so we have a limited capacity, but we will have the 50 most passionate <laughs> ukulele players in uh, the Somerville area coming together to perform, to learn, um, and listen to other ukulele players. Right on. I'm glad that you said it that way, the most passionate, because it sounds like there is a very tight you know, crew of ukulele players in Somerville. Why is, why is this event so important to that community? You know, I, I was really shocked that there wasn't already a, mm -hmm. a Somerville ukulele festival. There are several around the area, and actually this year I'm participating in a bunch. I'm going mm -hmm. to Connecticut and New York, mm -hmm. and I went out to Western Mass, and there was nothing right here. Um, there's, there's some things in like metro area, but uh, so I put the word out and I said, hey, would, you know, would some of my friends who play ukuleles be interested in this? Mm -hmm. And there was such a very positive response that I decided to build it myself. Yeah, right on. So, yeah. Um, you've got a bunch of names on your poster. Tell me about the folks who are going to be at this event. Oh, yeah. Well, so in addition to me, um, and I'm a singer songwriter and, and I'm kind of, I guess, known for playing ukulele, but um, my headliner for this is Grateful Ailey, and they're a, a local ensemble uh, that includes Ryan Elvanos and Tim Mann. And Tim Mann is also one of our instructors. Mm -hmm. And Tim is known for having played with Greg Hawks, who uh, who was a member of the Cars. All right. But Greg Hawks is a ukulele player, and so Tim cool. and Greg had several bands together. And now Tim's doing this uh, Grateful Dead 
covers on ukulele, Fun. which is pretty exciting. Um, we also have Dan O'Sullivan, who's mm -hmm. uh, pretty well known as a local ukulele instructor. He does the uh, Ukulele Union of Boston, and he's taught at the Cambridge Center for Adult Education. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Somerville Ukulele Club performing, and they're a group of women in Somerville who play ukuleles. Uh, they play like popular songs, mm -hmm. and uh, they're really, they're like the darlings of Porch Fest. <laughs> um, right on. And then we have Kenny Raskin, um, who reached out to me about this when he heard that the festival was happening and he's just amazingly talented and mm -hmm. he um, has, has made himself known as a professional clown but he also is this ukulele player um, and he's been with like Cirque du Soleil and cool. other, uh, other big shows on Broadway and right stuff on. but now he's playing ukulele in Somerville. Right um, and the Chocolele is led by Anne Koo. So Anne is... Um, also a ukulele instructor and she's really into running um, strum along groups and groups that encourage people to sing and she actually wrote her thesis on ukulele participatory groups Oh, cool! and she's a great teacher so I'm really excited about all this talent and bringing these people together. Yeah that's a long long list what um, what is your favorite part about this festival or or one's past? Um, so this is the first time mm -hmm. we're ever doing this, so hopefully the first annual yes. uh, Summer Lily. But my favorite part of other ukulele festivals, I guess, I you know, I always learn something new, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really neat to see all the different um, angles that people bring or, or experiences that people bring mm -hmm. to the instrument, the different types of songs people are excited about playing, mm -hmm. and uh, the styles, I guess. I'm also really stoked about the artwork. So we have this beautiful poster that was designed by a local artist named Sarah Dudek. Mm -hmm. And I had fallen in love with her work when I saw her at the Davis Square Flea mm -hmm. and bought one of her pieces. So I reached out to her and she was so kind and so accommodating and made these beautiful posters for us. Excellent. And, well, they're really good looking. Yeah. yeah. And there, she's going to be there at the festival selling not only these, but she's also made some greeting cards that mm -hmm. say things like, I miss you. <laughs> they're really cute. Yeah, it's very cute. Excellent. Well, um, when it comes time for people to enroll or to sign up or, you know, reserve their spot in this day because you have limited space, how, how do people do it? Um, sure. So we have a website and it's uh, summerlele.weebly.com. Mm -hmm. um, and that's S-O-M-E-R-L-E-L-E. -E -L -E. -E -L -E. um, and I think there's also an, an Art Week site. Or you can go to my website, amykucharik.com, which is probably harder to spell than <laughs> Summer Lele. It's K-U-C-H-A-R-I-K. Um, and all those places will will find you the link to buy tickets. Excellent. Um, and you can you can get a ticket to participate in the entire day. So there's going to be workshops starting at noon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, taught with the people I mentioned, and uh, some of those are going to be. You know what I, I forgot to mention? There's Please also um, an open room during the day. Ta um, that's sponsored by Miranda's Hearth. Mm -hmm. So they're a local art group run by uh, my friend Miranda. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're taking a room where people will be able to just come and do a uh, Skillshare or swap songs mm -hmm. or do an open jam all day long. So right if, if you're not into like sitting down in a workshop and you just want to play, there's also a space for sort that. Of birds of a feather meetup space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. Um, so anyway, all of that is happening during the day till 4.30, and mm -hmm. then we're taking a break, and then we're going to have the concert in the evening. You can buy tickets just for the um, workshops or for the whole day. Mm -hmm. And uh, concert tickets, if there's space, will be available at the event. If, if there's space. Yeah. Right, right on. Cool. Well, I hope that it turns out to be an awesome event. I hope you, you know, your doors are breaking open with a, a huge crowd who want to participate. Yeah, we hope there'll be, you know, at capacity and then we can do it again next year and yeah, have a, an even bigger festival. Right. Well, good luck. Maybe we'll have you back and talk about how it went. Thank you. Right, thanks for coming. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah.